Don't need money. Don't take fame. Don't need no credit card to ride this train. It's strong and it's sudden. And it's cruel sometimes. But it might just save your life. That's the power of love. That's the power of love. That's the power of love. The power of love. What you say? I told you that it's time to start the show. That you only meant well. Yeah, the show's well, gonna do well. You did. What you say? I said, let's go. That it's all full of our best. Yeah, it's probably gonna be like the best podcast. What you say? God, do I have to keep repeating that myself? Just so what we need, but you decided this. Hold up, I what thought we both say? decided to do this. What did she say? So let's start the show. Hey everyone, welcome to mm, What You Say, an OC podcast. My name is Elise Daly. And I am Scott Daly. And together, we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. This is the podcast where each and every week my beautiful wife Elise Aww, and I go through thanks. the hit 2000s teen drama, The OC, episode by episode. This week on the show we are covering season two, episode eight, That's the Power of Love. That's right, Scott. But before we get into this episode, it's time for everyone's favorite part. We're going to talk about the rosies and the thornies of our last week. Before we talk about the episode, we talk about really what's going on with our lives, Scott. So the, the rosies and thornies good is, the yes, bad. the good, the bad, the rose, the thorny. And so we're always going to start out with the bad, Scott. So this past week, what was bad? Well, I mean, before we go to that, I just want to talk about the rose of my life, which is uh, Huey Lewis and the News. Oh, not and me. Thanks. No, no, no. It's Huey Lewis and the News <laughs> ah, okay. and the Power of Love. Oh, good. I'm glad. The thing about that song, Elise, yeah, is Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about why it's better than me. Once, it's it's always got to be about you. I just can't talk about I know. About it's my, always got to be about me. I just me. can't talk about my friend Huey and his news friends. You know Huey? Yeah. He's my good personal friend Huey. Do you have an actual friend named Huey? I do, no, no, nobody knows anyone named Huey. Except for know. the news. The news know of a Huey. Well... Maybe we should find someone named Hugh and then just call him Huey. No, that's gross. Hefner? Why? Isn't he dead? Is Hugh Hefner Hugh dead? Hefner? I don't I think, think he's, he's dead. dead. I no. think he's dead. I don't think he's dead. I think he's dead. Is he dead? Yeah. We're going to look this up and see if he's dead or not. Yeah, he died he in did 2017. Die. Uh, he died on my birthday The world in is a better place. He passed on the torch to me. On his death day, <laughs> oh, I yay. became... The the Huey. The Huey. So I will be moving to the Playboy Mansion now. Um, there was a three-year grace period, but now I'm going to uh, go move to the mansion. Okay. I'm um, sure that that's quite lucrative. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, so they don't, Scott. They don't, they don't show naked women on that magazine anymore. Did you mm. know that? Yeah, I did. It's crazy. Way to go, women. <laughs> Stand strong. Uh, let's talk about some thorns. Yeah. Let's talk about your thorns, You want me to go first? I was trying to get you to go first before you went off on this Huey tangent. Well, for those of you that have been listening to the show for the past couple months, um, since we came back, really, you know that I have been on an extended furlough. Um, I didn't know it was going to be an extended furlough, but that's kind of the way things work. And on Friday morning, I got a call. Furloughed no more. Uh, Yeah, I am off of furlough (laughs) uh, because I do not have a job anymore. Um, So I am one of those millions of Americans that has lost their job due to this pandemic. Um, uh, It's not all of it, though, but I'm not really allowed to talk about that. Um, I'm not allowed to complain about it. Okay. According to my severance package. Oh, is that true? I can't say anything bad. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Did they tell you that? Yes. Yes. Oh. They said you cannot say anything bad about the company or the leadership of the company. So I will not be saying anything bad about the company or the leadership of the company. I also will not say what the name of the company is, but they have let me go. And so I am on the hunt for a job You know what, Scott? You're just so trendy. Once there's a trend, you just want to jump on it. Yeah. And so you know what? The trend was joblessness? It's fine. No, the trend was furlough. Ah. And now it's fired from furlough. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what? Way to go, Scott. Thank Way you. to be trendy. I am, you know, I, I do what I can. I do what I can. Yeah. Um, I am trying to look at the positive side of this. I am, you know, I've, I've been at this job for a while now. Um, it, I was very comfortable there, so I really wasn't, like, searching for the next thing. 
Um, and now I have the opportunity to. So I'm going to be looking. I think there's going to be good that comes from it. I'm going to be looking in my my career field of experience. And I'm going to also be looking for jobs in this thing that I spend all my other time doing, which is audio engineering and podcast producing and um, all of these things, too, because so I have pretty extensive experience in that stuff now. Like I, I was working on my resume for that today, and it's like. It's pretty impressive, sound. not to toot my own horn, like toot away, Scott. But I mean, like toot I've, away. I've produced hundreds and hundreds of hours of audio content. I've yes, built, you have. I've co-built a community. I've co-built a list. Like we started from the bottom. Now we're here. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. So um, I was going to do that, and, and too. we're not huge, but we're we're doing pretty good. And I don't know, like I, it would be wonderful to get to continue to do this as my side gig while also getting to like do that. As my job, that would be that'd be pretty cool, Scott. Freaking great! So we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna okay. take I'm gonna take this opportunity and I'm gonna to silence see your phone where it goes. Yes. Um. So that's that's my thorn, which I kind of turned into a rose. Sometimes sometimes you have a thorn and it's sharp, but if you if you just take the tip off of it, a rose sprouts out of that oh, thorn. Yes, way to go, Scott. I don't think that's how flowers. I work. don't think it's true but, either. But you know what? It's fine. They've mm-hmm. got that one tool that just you slice down the whole stem and then it gets rid of all the thorns and all you're left with is the rose. Yeah. So we'll pretend you used that <laughs> so, tool. That's what happened to my career. It just sliced stem right off. <laughs> and now it's dying. Now my career it's flower. It's not dying. My career flower. It's not dying, Scott. Dying. It's something that's beautiful and everyone loves water. because it doesn't hurt it them. Took it away from the water. It's dying. Yes, yeah, Scott, you're dying. My... No, my career. Uh, you my know, career is like whatever. the rose from Beauty and the Beast. And I have to get that job beast to tell me it loves me. Stat. Yes, please. <laughs> That'd be nice. At least what's your thorn? Um, so over the summer, I only have three weeks. And I decided what I had meant to do over spring break, clean everything out, I didn't do. So I was going to take one room at a time. And Scott, we have a lot of stuff at this time. <laughs> I just keep thinking tomorrow I need to do my closet and the the drawers and my jewelry. And I'm a little overwhelmed <laughs> just thinking about I, I it. I don't here here's the thing. I love you. I love you and I love that you're doing this and you're doing such a good job. I really am. You're doing such a good job. The places that you've gotten this done on look incredible. They really do. They look so good. We're getting rid of so much stuff. We're preparing for our move next year. Um no one says you have to be done at the end of these three Scott, weeks. I'm not going to have any time once things start back up again. Yeah, so we can start up again, you know, um, the next time you have off or no. during my extended job list. Oh, so you're going to do this when I have to go back to work? You're just going to take it over? No, I got a That's lot of... That's awesome. Thank you. I got a lot of paperwork I appreciate do, that, I really Scott. Know, you like, know, I'll start it and you'll finish it, but we'll be a team and we'll get it done together. Here's my point. Thank you. Here's my point. Thank you. You've turned my thorn into a rose too. I don't think you, I appreciate that. I don't think you need to be overwhelmed by this because there's no deadline. Scott, there's no deadline. Have you looked in our closet? Yeah, it's, our closet number one is too tiny. It's very small. If we had a bigger closet, I feel like this would be less of a problem. I think our listeners that have lived in one place for a very long time know exactly what this feels like. It's like. You move into a place and you have a certain amount of stuff and then you just kind of um, expand to fill the space. And we are at the point where we are on year four of living here and we have fully expanded to fill every nook and cranny of this space. You know what we're going to do on July the 4th? What are we going to do on July the 4th? That's the garage day. What is the garage day? We're cleaning out the garage. On the birth of our nation, Yeah, we're going to clean the garage. The most American activity, cleaning out your garage. It's true. I don't I don't want to do that. Why not? I don't want to. Scott? What? We already decided this together. I, I don't think that's true. Yes, you said we'd take a weekend, we'd do the garage. I, I don't have another weekend. I said we'd take a weekend. I didn't say it would be a holiday weekend. Scott. No. Well, I'm put, fine. I'm putting my foot down. Fine. It will not be the following weekend. It will be the weekend after that. I don't, okay. know if, I don't know if the mic's picking that up. It's not. It's not picking it up. Okay, Scott, tell That's me about your foot. rose. Uh, my rose is the basketball is coming back, baby. Why are you talking weird? Basketball is back. Okay. Basketball's coming back. It is uh, They announced back. on Friday the rest of the 2020 and 
FBA schedule. Um, it is going to be the 22 teams of 30 that had not yet been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs when basketball stopped are going to meet up in Orlando, Florida. Um, no fans. Um, obviously, they're going to be taking a lot of precautions um, smartly. No and fouls. No fouls at all. No, they're definitely going to be fouls. If you foul, you die. <laughs> <laughs> definitely going to be fouls. Um, and um, they're going to play, each team will play eight games over the course of a month. I think it's July 30th through, I think it's actually less than a month. Um, maybe it's like two weeks. It's like two weeks. So they're going to play eight more games and finish out the season to kind of seed the playoffs. So whoever is in the top eight of each conference by the end of those eight games, um, eight games per team, uh, will begin in the playoffs. And I haven't actually read what the playoff schedule is going to look like, if it's going to be full playoffs. I don't think it's going to be full playoffs. I wouldn't imagine. Because NBA playoffs are long. NBA playoffs start in April and end, like, right, right about now, the end of June. So I don't think they're going to do a full playoff. But basketball is my sport. Like, I love watching sports, but basketball is the sport I love more than anything. I love watching basketball. It's Me so too. fun. And I have missed it. I have I love the playoffs are such I, I watch so many games during the playoffs and I didn't get to do that this year. And so we're still going to get to do it. So I'm excited. We're going to make an event out of it. I'm excited that sports are coming back. I'm excited that basketball is coming back. I get to see my Mavericks go on a run and see if they. Uh, I was going to ask right. what yeah. what team are you most excited about watching? It's my team, my it team, is the Mavericks. Yeah, okay. you know my team. I know your team. I just mm -hmm. didn't know if there's another team you're excited about watching too. The Lakers are also very good this year. Okay. Um, I think the Lakers are going to be a pretty big threat. Um, I think the Laker Clipper. I think the first game of the the shortened welcome back season is Lakers Clippers. I think that's going to be a really fun game. It's always fun when the Lakers and Clippers play each other. It's still going to be different, but. Sports, 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 sports. There's been no sports. There's been that Peloton ride. That's, that was fun. Yeah, sure. At least, <laughs> what's your rose? Um, I just finished this wonderful book that... Talk to me about it. I greatly enjoyed. It's called American Royals. What is it about? And it's about, oh my gosh, what if in the Revolutionary War, George Washington wasn't president, he decided to become king. And so it's his great, great, great great grandchildren that are about to ascend the throne scott his um there's three children that are part of the washingtons there's beatrice and then the twins samantha and jefferson and it is about it's actually told in four different women's kind of not their perspectives because it's all third person but it jumps around between these four different characters like main storylines queen beatrice okay she's going to be queen beatrice you just spoiled the end of the book no i didn't the whole thing is about her becoming queen oh okay um hey Elise. what i'm pretty sure washington did not have children so i know he didn't is this saying is this alt universe saying he had children yes okay yes saying he had children we still had slavery well, we still had um Was there still a civil war? They didn't mention a civil war actually. So how did they the mentioned slavery? slavery. Go away? Um a king just decided to do away with it. Well, it's just monarchy, right? Yeah. Solves all the problems. Yeah. King just randomly says, "Nope. Yep. Problem solved." There's no civil war that I heard about. I forget what else there was. There's the Revere Guard in honor of Paul Revere. It was just wonderful, stupid. Scott. That's it's just, stupid. it's a young adult romance novel, and it was everything I wanted a summer novel to be and more. Yeah, you read it like over the entire weekend. I think you got on like Thursday and you were done yesterday. So you basically did nothing this weekend but read that book. It was so great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope they make a show out of it. <laughs> I would definitely I feel like watch definitely it. definitely already been, been a show like with the the alt history concept, no, but of not America this, had. not with these characters, Scott. I love these characters. I want to see what happens, and there's a sequel that comes out in September, so I'm really excited about <gasps> I, it. I didn't know this was YA. It's called Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's young adult and romance all in one. I, it's everything that's wrong with the world, but so right. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, Scott, it's, fine. it's true. It's fine. It's a book. Enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I did so much. Good. If I'm you glad. want a good beach read, guys, American Royals. No one should be going to the beach right now. And if you do, wear your mask. If you want a good mask beach summer, read. like get lost. There's not any, there's no death. 
There's no infidelity. There's nothing wrong with like children getting messed up or like dying in childbirth or like nothing wrong other than the romantic strings getting pulled back and forth I, I in the that. most wonderful royal way. I love this book is alt history. What if America was a monarchy and it doesn't seem at all interested in like the actual like Actually, it's worse whenever they're like, ah, what, what are we going to just elect a president one day? I was like, stop making these jokes. That's just ridiculous. I just feel like, is it actually like reckoning with how things would be different? Or is no. it really just a backdrop no. for... It's really just a backdrop. It's not anything <laughs> about like royalty. Oh it's basically God. what's happened was they took the story of America and they took the story of the British crown because there's like oh my gosh, you can't marry a commoner sort of thing. And all these people in the royal line have rejected their commoners. And this one princess wants to marry a commoner. And can she marry a commoner? And then there's Princess Margaret, who has married a Hollywood royal, and she gave up the a throne. Hollywood royal. Or not Hollywood royal, but Hollywood movie star. So what, I mean, like, in, in Europe, they had, like, ancient lines of... Yeah. aristocracies mm -hmm. and like and like royal non-commoners like how does that mm -hmm. work in america i don't know if i want to know this much about this book. there's the like the duke of boston okay. so there's no states of course there not. is oh the louisiana gamble they did mention that instead of the louisiana purchase <laughs> they were like playing poker and oh america won the louisiana territory <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it is wonderful Oh my god! If okay. anybody needs something lighthearted, check Jesus. it out. Okay, let's talk about a another high quality piece of entertainment. Oh yes, let's talk about the OC. Oh yes, it's kind of like you want the American Royals to be the next OC I because like it the, would be brilliant. The Coens are the American Royals. They could be. All right, Elise, talk to me about this week's episode. Oh, yes. Okay, so The Power of Love is the eighth episode of season two of The O.C., written by John Stevens and Mike Godfrey, directed by our good old friend Michael Lang, who previously directed season two episode, The Way We Were. And Scott and I really liked that yeah, one. Yeah, we did. It aired on January 13th, 2005. Wow. 2005. The day before we got married but, quite a few years ago. But years later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in this episode, Sandy manages to forget his 20th anniversary, but he scrambles to plan a romantic weekend getaway anyway. Unfortunately, the Coens can't go because their sons are being bad, bad boys. Seth spent the night at Alex's apartment um, and keeps sneaking out of the house. Meanwhile, Ryan is busted after hiding his relationship with Lindsay from his guardians. They bust in on him shirtless <laughs> and getting heavy. Uh, elsewhere, DJ the Yard Guy breaks up with Marissa, and Summer Roberts bombs with Zach's parents' family. Everything comes together at the end when the boys throw a surprise party for their parents' anniversary at the bait shop, because that's what every 40-something married couple wants to do, hang out at a teen bar. It is. Elise. It's what Sandy wants to do. What did you think of this week's episode? Um, Let's see here. I enjoy this episode because we haven't had a whole lot of, like, Sandy Kirsten relationship development in the past mm -hmm. few episodes and this is very much just centered on sandy and kirsten and i feel like they are the foundation couple you know we've got all these little high school couples that are going in and out and trying to figure out but sandy and kirsten are like the foundation you sure. know it's their family that everything else connects to they're the the hub and so I like it because you're once again focusing on Sandy and Kirsten. You know, yeah. Unfortunately, Sandy is the one that messed up, but Sandy's good at schmoozing. And so he's always working his way back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Um, it, it's good to see an episode centers around them. I really enjoyed this one too. I think episodes that end in like a montage of singing where like other characters are all like patching up their various B and C plots while the A plot is patching itself up as well. Uh, it's just, I, I love those episodes always feel good. I, I just, I just love the, the musical montage ending of episodes. Like when lost did that, those are some of my favorite episodes when lost ends on music. 
you know which episodes I'm talking about. Nobody's singing. It's usually when, um, when, um, 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 I forgot the character's name. The lot of Penny's the boat? numbers. No. Uh-oh. Hurley? Hurley. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to say Huey. Yeah. Because it had two <laughs> on the brain, but uh, it's not Huey. When he's listening to his CD player mm. and there's like music playing and that like a montage of everyone like patching up. I love those episodes. This had it, except it was Sandy fucking Cohen singing the song, which made me mm. like it even more. Yeah. Um, I thought this was a pretty good episode. And uh, I'm excited to see where it's going because I think there's a, there's a lot of things that they're laying for some future drama. And I'm pretty excited it's about true. that. It's true, Scott. All right. Um, let's move on to how we break down the episode by talking about our favorite parts and our least favorite parts. Elise, talk to me about your least favorite part of the episode. Okay. So if you've been listening to the show, you know how much I do not like Marissa. Yes. And there are so many storylines that they just – continually repeat and the one with marissa just always using boys in order to make julie upset it just bothers me it's just like completely one note and it was a big part i felt like of her storyline and really of kind of wrapping some things up in this episode and slightly turning it into a rose that now dj is gone (laughs) but still it's just it's exhausting. Yeah. And I mean, like, you will find as horrible as Julie Cooper is, Julie Cooper Nicholas, I will, I dare say it, always be on Team Julie. And <laughs> um, I'm, I'm feeling Julie's pain of being exhausted with Marissa in this episode. And so you are. I'm just done. The person who loves to root for, for the, the evil, evil women. I know. The evil women on any show you watch, <laughs> those are your favorites. Cersei, Julie Cooper. Um, let's think of some other shows that you would love the evil women. I can't think of any right now. Exactly. There's only two. Um, but this does not surprise me at all. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm with you on this one. Um, so basically what happens in this episode is Julie Cooper Nickel is – doing they're going to get a photo shot a photo shoot in a magazine to redo their image as a family which i'm like 100 percent convinced was a plot line in season one oh, it and was. they're just doing the same thing again which sucks um and of course marissa doesn't want to participate in the photo which is the same plot line from season one and then she decides okay i'll participate I'll bring DJ along too, which is this poor guy. I mean, I have been very vocal in the fact that I thought he was a boring character and he's uninterested, interesting at all. But I also feel bad for him. Yeah, because he, he just, seems like a nice guy. I think the reason the show doesn't want to bother to get to know him is because none of the characters that exist in the show want to bother to get to know him. No. Like, I just, I, I never bought that Marissa actually cared about this guy at all. He was always being used, one thing or another, to make Ryan jealous, to make her mom pissed off. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was his whole point. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that he's gotten out from under that. He should have taken that damn money. He really should have, Julie, because he definitely earned yeah. it. Julie Cooper gave him a $5,000 check to stay away from his daughter, um, and he gave that to her and said, go on a shopping spree. I'm like, no, man, she's fucking rich. Take that money, yard guy, and yeah. like do something for yourself. Get, Get yourself out. a better truck. Yeah, yeah, do something. Um, but he's an, he's the nice guy, so of course he wouldn't do that. And also like Julie like saying, like, I tested him by giving him $5,000. Bullshit, you tested him. You wanted him to leave and you thought he'd take it. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, I, I agree with you. This whole plot line just kind of sucks. But I, you know what? Good riddance. Yeah, I'm hoping that now that he's gone. No, I bet we're going to do this all over again. There's going to be some other Scott, bad boy. Scott, it's the same cycle. There's going to be some other it's bad boy. Over and, and she's going to start dating the bad boy. Except this bad boy. <sighs> like, DJ was like bad boy because the Cooper Nichols are like stuck up rich people that think that like yard people are like a, a mm-hmm. yard guy is like beneath them yes. so like he wasn't even really a bad boy i think next dude that comes along is gonna be a, a bad, real bad boy. bad boy not like okay. a seth pretending to be a bad boy but like a real bad boy okay um, like donnie who's donnie you remember in season one? Oh, the guy who pulled a gun on the, yeah. at the beach house yeah that kind of maybe he'll come back maybe <laughs> donnie will come back um yeah it'll be something like that um uh, which i don't know at least like 
at least like there'll be stakes there. Like with the 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 DJ thing, I never had any stakes. It's like, oh no, they're gonna break up. Oh, who no. cares? Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Kind of the worst part of the episode, I think. Yeah. Um, but you know, weakest the other, storyline. You know what the other worst part of the episode was? My thorn. Uh, I'm see Scott. She's awful. No, here's the thing. She's awful. No, 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 no. I'm about to talk about Ryan and Lindsay, and I want to preface. And the this. only reason that you're going to defend her is because you saw her boobs. No, I did not see her entire. You hesitated. Boob. She did. Not, you were like, "Uh, well, maybe." She's not like, like free boob in the episode. Okay, she's just very. She's basically. I. <laughs> I think Lindsay's okay. A great person. Okay. I am kind of sick of the back and forth of on like, again, off again. Yeah, I'm yep. kind of sick of it because like, it's like, no, we're just gonna be friends. Oh no, we're gonna give this a try. And like this, so in this episode, they get discovered by uh, Kirsten, and Kirsten oh, no. freaks the fuck out about it um, because, like, rightly so. Yeah, like. um, yeah. Well, and they lied. That's bad. But um, so they get discovered by Kirsten, and then Kirsten does what I think is like one of the most cruel things she does, which is like, I'm having trouble with this. Why don't we just be friends? Like, I, I think the speech she gives is something to the effect of, and again, I'm not going to be able to use quotes because for whatever reason, this episode would not, would not Maybe burn. it's the disc. I think it's the disc. The disc. We're on a new disc after this episode, so we will have clips from the episode returning next week. Huzzah. Hooray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> you, nobody understands what you're referencing. Go watch the great guys. It's great. Um, so Julie is basically like last year um, I had to welcome Ryan into my family. And that was a lot for me. That was a lot for me. And I'm just kind of be like, oh, I'm sorry, Kirsten. She just found out who her dad is and that her mom was lying to her her entire life. And she's got this whole other family that she's trying to get to know. I'm sorry. Taking in a kid was a lot for you. Kirsten I'm so sorry like she just like maybe we should just be friends and you can tell Lindsay's like broken hearted by that because yeah. she wants a sister she's never had a sister she's before. never had a family before yeah, yeah and so I'm just like I was so pissed off at Kirsten but but then it goes back to then Ryan is like trying to pick like Ryan wants her to spend time with her sister so Ryan is like maybe we should just be friends and it's like oh, n- oh no and then she's mad and then everyone meets up again at the bait shop and then like Kirsten gives Lindsay her permission to date Ryan, which is like Kirsten gives Ryan permission to date Lindsay. Yes, correct. Yes. Correct. Which is again like, I don't need your permission. That's just like No. I just didn't like any of it. I just didn't like any of it. Like maybe now that that's out of I, this here here's my problem with it. I don't think that now that that's out of the way, this part of the storyline. I think this is gonna be the Ryan Lindsay storyline until Ryan and Lindsay break up, which I do think is coming. Because I just don't... I think they're out of stuff to do with this relationship. They're on. They're off. They're off. Yeah. They're on. On. Off. Like, you can only do that so many times before nobody cares anymore. Yeah. And Unless you develop it and make it interesting like Seth and Summer. Right. 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 Well, and characters that you care about. Uh, of course. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and that Ryan and Lindsay are, are not that. So... No. I just don't know where their relationship can go from here. So I'm kind of... I'm pretty doom and gloom about them right now. We'll see. But. It's Okay. We don't like Lindsay. I do so though. I do like Lindsay. No, and I you wish don't. I, you don't like Lindsay Scott. I, I By wish, the end of this, you're just gonna be blah, Lindsay. I wish that the show could like ha like I think the the part that sucks about Lindsay is because she's Ryan's love interest, that's how the show that's is always gonna frame is. her. And I think the storyline of like getting to know her new family and like struggling with all this stuff, I think that is all super interesting. And I wish they got to explore that outside the lens of also Ryan. I'm Ryan's girlfriend, um, which is a bummer. But yeah, because being Ryan's girlfriend is the kiss of death in the show. It is mm-hmm. literally. Yeah. I don't know. Teresa. Marissa, She's dead. Teresa is Lindsay. dead. Teresa yeah. is dead. And that baby's dead, too. <laughs> They're all They're dead. all dead. Yep. Dead to me. Oliver, dead. He is dead. I, my headcanon is that Oliver died off off screen. He's dead <laughs> Probably. Now. He's dead now. He had some issues yeah. that... Ooh. Um, so, so what's... <laughs> that got dark. So what is your favorite? We, we talked enough about all the stuff oh, we yes. didn't like in this episode. What did you love in this episode? Well, you know, not just this episode, but throughout the entire series, Sandy is one of my favorite people. Yes. And this episode with... All that Sandy messed up with about 
Yes, he forgot their anniversary. Not just forgot their anniversary, forgot how many years they'd been married. Yikes. Um, Yes, he has a different parenting style than Kirsten, and their disagreements are not talked about before either of them takes separate action. So the other one can be caught off guard and had some hurt feelings. So yes, Sandy is not perfect. I admit that. But Sandy... He sure does make up for it in the end. And his karaoke at the end of this episode, Scott, just was so much fun and made the whole episode wonderful. 10 out of 10, just because of Sandy's karaoke. (laughs) 10 out of 10. He sang, I don't know how many songs, the band, we don't know the band, we don't know the people that backed him up, no, but man, he I took off he that tie, either. he grabbed that microphone. He rolled those sleeves up and he belted. He got the crowd with lighters swaying back and forth. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a good show. Yes. I enjoyed it. Yes. That was my favorite part. It was great. Yep. It was great. I loved yep. it too. Um and your favorite part about this episode also has to deal with scene. Yeah, we'll get there in a sec. I want okay. to talk about Kirsten again because here's my deal. Okay. Sandy fucked up in this episode. He and did. I, I, I don't know how you forget your 20th wedding anniversary. Like, I could see maybe like you like forgetting like in the moment, like, like maybe you wake up the day and you forgot what day it was, but just to not realize it's coming up. I just, that's like a plot line in every single sitcom ever, right? The husband, the stupid husband forgets the anniversary. Yeah. I just don't, I don't know. Like, I don't see me forgetting our, I feel like you and I talk about our anniversary as it's coming up. Like, what are we going to do? Like, like, I I just don't, I just don't think that ever actually happens. If you've ever forgotten your wedding anniversary, anyone listening, please send us an email. Yeah, let us know. Doofmedia at gmail.com. Let us Scott, know how it happened. Scott at doofmedia.com. Yeah, I haven't, like, turned that on yet. Oh. Um, and don't get on my personal email account. It's not personal. It's Doof Media. It's personal. That's my business. That's my business. Everyone's going to send me stuff now. Well, it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's awful. He's awful. And I love him. And he, he he does kind of redeem himself by the end of it by doing something very special with the help of his children. He's also like a saint for putting up with Kiss in this episode. She brings up the Portland stuff again, and I got mad. That's not cool. You they can't, haven't really worked. You can't try to relitigate that kind of shit. You can't just bring it up again and be like, oh, well, I'm actually still mad about this other thing. That well, you know what? She did. Yeah. And I didn't like it. And she was wrong. And she apologized for it. And I'm glad. Just like he was wrong for forgetting his anniversary. And I'm glad he apologized for that via the gift of song, which yes. is what I gave all y'all at the beginning of the episode. You are. Happy anniversary. So welcome. Um. So yeah, that was that was just my Kirsten rant. She okay. sucks in this episode. I love her. She sucks in this episode. Ugh. Kirsten's got some different dimensions, Scott, that you're gonna find out about. I know. I that's I, I like that she sucks in this episode because that makes her an interesting character to mm-hmm. me who has like flaws and makes mistakes and like grows and learns mm-hmm. from them and changes, unlike DJ and Ryan. Mm, Kiki. Yeah. Whew. Um She's got a lot. But on to uh, my rose. I would like to talk about Sandy Cohen again. (laughs) Okay. But I want to specifically talk about Sandy Cohen and how he deals with the Alex situation. All right. Tell me about it. So in this episode, as we said, uh, Seth spends the night at Alex's. He does. Without telling his parents. Um, Then he proceeds to try to sneak out of the house to go see her again after he's been punished by his father. And he gets even more mad. Mm -hmm. And how does Sandy Cooper deal with this? He goes and talks (laughs) to Alex. He goes down to the bait shop without oh. telling his son and confronts Alex. And brilliant he, move he if you want to get her to go away. He does a well, yes, but he actually does a pretty good job. Um, first of all, I, I have a screenshot of it up here. My favorite moment in the episode is when Alex is like at the bar working and she actually has like a low cut top and she leans over so you can see her back tattoo. She has a lower back tattoo. Tramp stamp. That's what we call I, that. I was not. I know I was not going to use that phrase. Why not? Because that's mean. It's tramp stamp. Um, um, and Sandy like <laughs> sees it. And, and then he knows. He's like, he gives this look of like, Oh gosh, what has my son got himself into? But she's like, "So you want you want me to stop seeing your son?" And he's like, "Yeah, I do, but you have tattoos and work in a rock bar, so I don't think that's going to happen." And so he kind of levels with her as a person. 
and it's like, look, like something's going on with my kid. Um, I, I need you to respect and understand that, like your presence, he's not listening to me. So maybe he'll listen to you. He needs to like get his shit under order because yeah, over the last two weeks, he's stolen a car. He snuck out twice. Um, I'm not clear if they had sex or not because like, it seems like they did. But then when Sandy later in the episode asks Seth, if he's sleeping with her, he's like, no dad, you don't have to worry about that. Thanks to what you did talking to her. And I don't know if that they means just messed around some Scott. I mean, She is like in the scene where he's calling Ryan at the beginning of the episode where he's at her house. She is walking out of the bathroom, putting a shirt on. So if they messed around, around, it was some pretty heavy messing around. Yeah. Um, but I, I like he, he actually gets to her because he's like, I think the line he says is sometimes in order to be a good dad, you have to be a bad guy, which means like, like he knows he's going to upset his son by kind of going behind his back to talk to his girlfriend. Um, and that gets to her because she's like, I- I've never had a good dad. Like I've never had a good dad. I've never had it like my dad. Like, and so she actually listens and she's the one that kind of tells Seth, Hey, um, I need a break because something's going on with you and I don't want to get in the middle of it. And I want your dad asked me to do something and I want to respect his wishes because he was kind to me. And it's such just a sweet scene. And then the, th- the thing that caps it off at the, for me is at the end of the episode, because everything's at the bait shop, she's like giving up the club for them to do this. She gets to meet Kirsten and it's a little awkward. It is. It's but, a little awkward, but like they seem to like each other. And like, there's a chance that like these two people will be very like, kind and welcoming to this woman who is not used to having parental figures treat her with respect. And that's really cool. That's really cool. I like it a lot. Um, I I think, I think he said something to the effect of anytime, like she's like, I've never really had any parenting. It's like, anytime you want to, you can come on over and Kirsten and I'll ground you too. (laughs) And I just, I love the way the Coens just like take these people under their wing. Um, and no matter who they are, no matter what's going on with them, even though he doesn't like her because of what he she's doing to his son, which I mean, it's mostly Seth's fault. Sandy. Yes. To, yes. To be fair. Mostly Sandy. Sandy. Yes, yes. But uh, Kirsten. She is, accepts it. Kirsten is not as quick to do it, but she always comes around to it eventually, I think. Um, and that, that's San, that's the Sandy effect on her. Yeah. So loved it. Loved. I, I love Alex. I love Alex. She's so cool. Um, she's a fun character. She's a really, I've always she's a really her. good character. I mean, here I'll I'll say it. She's a better character than Lindsay. She is. There you go. I, that's the best Thank you're you. gonna get out of me. Thank you. Love Alex. Better than Zach. <laughs> no, um, Zach and Alex are just both great. Hey, so neither of our thorns or our roses this week had anything to do with Zach and Summer. No, who had a pretty important episode as well so you want to talk about that for a little bit Uh, we're going to talk about in relationships okay we'll talk about we'll swing back around to that in relationship status the zach and summer of it all because it's a big 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 events in this week's episode um but i think for now it's time to move to elisa's favorite section come on scott tell us about the style of the oc hey 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 come on scott tell us about the style in the oc hey 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 all right, this week on Scott's Style section, oh, we got some stuff We've to talk got boobies. about. So remember um, like four weeks ago, five weeks ago when Lindsay was introduced into the show and we talked about how the show dressed her like super conservatively. Like Not she, anymore. Like she's wearing like sweaters like that don't show an inch of skin and she's dr- she's dressed like, like, like what you think like a nerd would dress like, right? Well... I don't know if this is on upon re- revelation of being a, a nickel that has done this, but in this week's episode, Lindsay is wearing a booby shirt. <laughs> so she is wearing a, um, I believe it's spaghetti strap, right? I mean, it's like a spaghetti strap tank. It's purple. Oh, you called it a booby shirt. It's a booby shirt. I have a screenshot right here. Tell me that's not a booby shirt. It's a low cut shirt. It's the, extremely. The low name cut. is not booby shirt. Boob, it's booby <laughs> shirt. So not it's it's extremely low cut. You can see so much of the booby. So like, there's no <laughs> way this shirt would be allowed in school. At least is what I'm saying. What is no. what is with the school? But more importantly, than that I think you will see in this in this screenshot that I managed to pick. You will notice um, right here. I'm tapping it. Uh-huh. Um, you will notice the purple eye shadow. Oh yeah. On the eye. Um, that's new as well. She didn't used to do that. So 
So so you're not only looking at her boob. She's got eyes, too. Yes. That's great, Scott. But here's my point. So you got boob one, circling that, boob two, <laughs> I one, I two, all purple. All four of those those viewpoints, all purple. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, generally, women color coordinate their, their eyeshadow. Their boobs with, yeah. with their, with their eyeshadow. Generally, it's an unwritten rule. I gotcha. I gotcha. All I'm saying is, is it is very interesting the kind of 180 this character has mm-hmm. made from the style perspective yeah she they are dressing her completely different from the way they did when she was introduced yeah and it was very shocking to see this shirt today not to say like i think this is fine not in school this is not fine to wear in school well see so the deal is also like it's one thing to wear that camisole underneath that the top portion it does have what looks to be like a bra, Boobies. almost like a bralette Boobie sort of thing. Boobie. It's called booby support. Then, yeah. But the thing that makes it seem worse than it really is is the fact that she's wearing a long sleeve top over that has the neckline that goes down low. low. So it's like so it, it, that just goes right it, underneath. It your eye line. Yeah. And then it just like cuts and and lifts right up there oh yeah and so it's just like boobs and it's lacy yeah Oof. yeah not she not high school throw, appropriate she'd get thrown out of school she would i'd throw her out um so that's Lindsay. that's yeah. Lindsay, and her booby shirt skanksy don't be, don't don't do that don't do that it's yeah. fine it's a fine shirt just not to wear you know maybe to like the beach find a way to the beach Okay, Scott. I'm whatever. just pointing out that just it's a change. move on. All right, next through. up we have Marissa. What's Cooper. wrong with this one, Scott? Um, I don't know. So Marissa is wearing. Let me try to describe this, and okay. at least you'll tell me how I'm okay. doing. She's got a pink tank on camisole. I call those camisoles. It's a spaghetti. It's the spaghetti mm-hmm. strap thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a camisole. You can abbreviate it to a pink cami if a you would like. A pink cami. She's got yes. a pink cami on. On top of that, she's got a long sleeve pink shirt. That's a, a, a lighter shade of pink. Um, that is sheer. What does that mean? See through. Okay, I was just gonna say see through because sheer see through <laughs> sh- tells people that you can see through it. Uh huh. So does sheer. Yeah, but that's a just a word that you're saying that like half the people listening are like, what does that mean? See through. Everyone knows what that means. Everyone. Let me use my words. This is Scott's fashion corner. Let me use my words. Continue, please. It's see through. And the, the weird thing about it is. So you, it's see-through, so you can see the pink cami underneath. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but it's also got this, like, weird, like, neck scarf thingy mm-hmm. um, that goes over one shoulder. And it's got, a, like, Marissa loves brooches. Oh, good. You know what the brooch. She loves brooches. Mm-hmm. I don't think this looks good. I don't think this looks it's good. It's not a great. And, you know, super trendy in the early 2000s. Was the, the small sheer? Small handbags that are worn completely over the shoulder. So tiny. Parasol. So, yes. So hot right now. And she wears them all the time. Yeah. I, I think I'd be okay with this if it wasn't for the weird scarfy shouldery thing. Yeah. Which makes it look like uh, like a, a um, like an army uniform or something like that. It's weird. I don't know if I'd go to say army uniform. Like an old-fashioned army uniform. Not like a modern-day army uniform. Like a yeah, like I'll I'll, I'll show you an You'll example. You'll pull up another pick. Okay. Um, I don't I, I don't mind the see throughiness of it. I think that's fine. I think it's just this 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 weird this weird thing. This with this bro with a brooch on it. Too many brooches, Marissa. Get away from that brooch life. Okay. No brooches. Guess who's next? We won't broach that subject. <laughs> Guess who's next? Alex. Alex is wearing. Um, is this also a cami? No, that one's just a tank top. What is the difference? Um, a cami is generally worn underneath another article of clothing, like so an undershirt I, so with I, a tank I, top. If I layer a tank top under another shirt, it becomes a cami? No, it also has to deal with the straps, and then typically a camisole has a built-in bra. This has a built-in bra? I guess it does. You would assume so. Uh, so she's wearing a, a very a very short skirt, is Alex wearing? Yes. Like a army. Army skirt, um, a tank top, and... Fishnets. Yeah. Fishnets. Everybody loves a girl in fishnets. I actually. Right? I don't love them, but. Oh, I love them. But she pulled them off here. Look at that. Look at that. 
I mean, fishnets to me have always seemed more costume than every day, but she's definitely pulling it off. I agree, but she's pulling it yeah. off. I mean, I guess this is her costume for the show. Got that butterfly tat, got those fishnets, got that surfing poster in the background. You think this- every time that they put that on her that that's just like a water yeah. tattoo? Yeah. Or like paint? Yeah, I think they have like a stencil thing that they use, yeah. Press yeah. on. I mean, makeup people have to put on tattoos all the time. Yeah. Like, they're they're very well-versed in that. How do you um, think they measure to make sure it's the exact same spot every time? I think they use, I don't know, like, comparison photographs. I'm sure it's probably not in the exact same spot every time. Oh, it's but just, it's supposed to be. Even if it's, like, a little tiny bit off, no one's going to notice. I would notice. No, you wouldn't. No, you Scott, wouldn't. I'm going to notice every week from here on out. What do you think? We've never talked about her apartment. It's very 70s. Look at this. Look at these things on the back of the couch. What's going on there? Look at this couch. It's That's a 70s also couch. also just very, um, I get what I can and I'm going to put it together. Right. And it's all from the 70s, except for the surfing poster. You think she's really into surfing? It seems like a type yes. of person to be really she into surfing. She lives by the beach. All right. Okay. Well, Last tell me about certainly Julie. not least. I pulled this out because we don't talk about the adults very much. Yeah. Um, cause mostly it's the kids, the adults kind of just wear the same kind of thing. Yep. But Julie was in a photo shoot this week. She was. And she's wearing a dress. Look, you know how I feel about Julie. Don't like her. Do not like her. She's rocking this dress. This is a, this is a. You seem to like Julie's in clothes. It's a one strapper. It's a one strapper. That's what they call them. Um, and it, so it's over one shoulder. <laughs> so the other shoulder is open and, uh, it's blue and pink. <laughs> Uh-huh. Pinkish purple. Uh-huh. Um, it's a pretty good looking dress. She pulled she's pulling it off. Yeah. Skin tight. I like it. It Long. is a little skin tight, yeah. She's got those nice gold shoes. Yeah, yeah. One strapper. It's a one strapper. It's a one strapper. I give it one strap out of one. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it for my fashion corner. Way to go, Scott. Yeah, you're how learning. did I do? You're, you're great. How you're learning. You're learning. I learned about a cami. Yeah, you did. I learned about sheer things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned the correct name for that dress is a one strapper because yeah. you didn't you didn't correct me. I so was I'm too assuming, busy laughing. I'm yep. assuming that was right. So let's move on to the next segment. Let's talk about some relationship status. Okay. S- status I. All right, so we're going to start this week with Sandy and Kirsten. Last week, they were at a 7 out of 10, and this week's episode really revolved around this couple, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it is their 20th anniversary. Sandy does not remember. Oops. Kirsten and Sandy have some tension boil over the forgetting of the anniversary and also their parenting styles. In the end, Kirsten forgives, remembers why she loves him. So instead of deducting and instead of growing, we're going to keep them at a 7 out of 10. I think they've returned back just to where they were. They definitely, if we had ended the episode early, would have lost some, but I don't think they had gained enough to be better than where they started. Right? You think that's fair? Yeah, I think that's very fair. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, they definitely kind of, th- this was definitely a one episode arc for them, right? They started off good, things got bad, back to good. By the end of it. So I think it's fair to leave them right where they are. Seven out of ten seems perfectly fair to me. Okay. So tell me about Julie and Caleb. Oh, wow. Julie Cooper and Caleb Nickel. Last week, we gave them the dreaded one out of ten. Julie has once again decided that they are the picture-perfect family. Caleb doesn't believe that their family is the ideal Newport fam, but he does decide to pose in the picture anyway. He is there for the picture. Um, that's the only scene he's in with her, except for the be- very beginning of the show is posing for the picture. So they're still not doing great, but, uh, we give him a little bump and a little, you know what? a little bump. As we started talking, I realized I could have changed my, my rose from Sandy singing to Caleb and his reaction to whenever DJ pulled up for the photo <laughs> shoot. He's like, oh my God, why is, why is the yard guy here? Tell him to go. Go mow the yard another day. Yeah, tell, tell just him like, to come back. To, he has no idea what's going on. He is, it's just hilarious. He's so utterly ignorant to anything that's going on in this household <laughs> with any of these people. It's wonderful. He puts everyone in a box and they have to stay in that box. Yes. And if anyone tries to get out of the box, he doesn't understand. It doesn't want to accept it. Come back tomorrow, yard boy. <laughs> come back tomorrow, yard boy. 
Why is the yard boy? But it was like he's so innocent in it. It was hilarious. <laughs> I really wish that you had audio just so that you could I let know, them all hear I that. I know, I know. It's so funny. Just go watch the episode. It's on HBO Max right now. Yeah. Um, Caleb is the best. Yeah, you're right. I, I totally <sighs> forgot about that. Yeah. It's it's really it wonderful. Was, it was wonderful, yes. So Zach and Summer, we Ooh, said we were going we to talk about them. This. So last week they were to five out of ten. And this week, both Summer and Zach want to take their relationship to the next level. So Summer is wanting to take it to the next level because she thinks that Seth and Alex are hooking up. So she thinks that that means her and Zach need to hook up because yeah. she always thought that she was going to be the one um, to do to, that first post – break up yeah. with them so and let's remember that they were both virgins yes before yes they start sleeping together so she goes to zach and says that she wants to take their relationship to the next level and him being so innocent and sweet it's like oh yeah i was thinking about that too like let's definitely do that this weekend but in his <laughs> mind his whole let's take it to the next level is i want you to meet my family so summer ends up going to meet um zach's mother and sister because his dad is working on legislature somewhere because you know he's um, congressman a, a second, like i think an assault weapon ban yeah. is what they casually yeah. say anyway so this lunch that summer goes to with zach's family just completely disastrous and yeah they're talking about cashmere as in the land that had the the war well, uh, you know, I'm just as bad as summer in this. India, but then she, India and uh, Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she brings up her cashmere sweater mm-hmm. and pashmina, and it's just downhill from there. It is. I mean, if you are a type of person who does not like cringe humor, you will not enjoy this scene. It is cringy to the max, right? It is yeah. awkward. You feel so bad for her. And of course, what we're doing here is we're intentionally calling back to the lunch between yeah. Seth and and her father. Yeah. Um, we're trying to make connect dots here. And we basically created the situation in which Summer feels just like Seth did at the, after mm-hmm. the end of that lunch. Yeah. Um, but Zach being a much better person than anyone on the show um, is handles it way nicer than Summer handled it. Summer yes. almost broke up with him. Summer yes. freaked out, lost her mind, and almost dumped him. And Zach's response was, that's exactly why I like you, because you're different from my family. Yes. And so she blew it with the sister and mother, but now she understands again how self really felt. So they're going to go actually down one point mm-hmm. just because yeah. we don't know how this is going to like affect the future. Uh, but yes, we, we, we know that Zach is still in it, but Summer, she's had her confidence you know, shaken a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to move them down just one. I mean, we know Summer has issues – feeling like she doesn't um, uh, she doesn't deserve the people she's with, right? That when she was with Seth, she felt like mm-hmm. he was better than her, smarter than her. Um, she felt like she didn't deserve him because she she looks at yeah. herself as like the stupid um, kind of ditzy girl. Um, that, that's how she looks down upon herself like that. So we have entered a situation where she's going to be feeling these same feelings with this new guy. And I think it is most important to say that the thing that instigated this entire thing is her making a rash action to sleep with him or to try to sleep with him just because she thought Seth did. She's very, very bothered by this. And so the show is very like slyly being like, Oh, she's clearly not over him yet. Yes. Um, She's upset to hear that that his relationship with Alex is advancing, um, which I mean, again, I, I, I don't know if they actually slept together. I, I don't think they did. And I'm, I'm saying this just because I think if they slept together, Seth would be bragging about it to Ryan a lot. Like that's he, true. Like a lot. And he doesn't do that. So um, he was just bragging about how he spent the night. And, and I think he was telling the truth when he said we were just watching TV and we fell asleep. Like, I, I really feel like. I really feel like that's not Seth lying in that moment. Um, so, yeah, so he hasn't actually done this. And so she's, you know, we, we we were very mean to Marissa this week for just using boys. Um, and and I feel like that's what Summer's doing with Zach. And she ends up getting herself into a situation that she didn't expect and blows it. And, yeah, I, I think I think lowering them by a point is fair. Four out of ten. Yeah. I think that's fair. Thank so you. I'm worried about them. I'm worried about this relationship because he's in it. He's clearly in it. She is not. It's very obvious to me that she's it's not. True. So, all okay. right, but now we are going to move on yeah. to Marissa and DJ 
the yard guy. Last week, we gave them a 6 out of 10. I think this will be the biggest drop of the week. Marissa, I really could have dropped them more because we know it's inevitable. We can just take them off. Right? I, I, I think I think I'm going to so. I think I'm going to call an audible and say we're changing this to a zero and we're okay. going to take them off the board. So Marissa uses DJ to get back at her mom again. DJ slows. He is slightly classy by taking the five thousand dollar check from Julie and then giving it to Marissa instead of spending it on himself, which I again think he should have done. Um and he breaks up with her and leaves. And they, they actually have like the reason I think this is done done is because it's not like a dramatic like I'm done. They ha- the end of the episode is like a very nice conversation between the two of them where he's like, look, like, I know you probably liked me once, but you hated her more. And that's what this all was all about. And I got to go. And she's understanding of that. And she doesn't say he's wrong. Either. No, that's the she, thing. she admits understands it. it. She totally admits it. Um, and then he leaves the show. So zero out of ten. DJ the Yard Guy, we hardly knew ye. Goodbye. Yep. Okay, so, ugh. <laughs> Ryan and Lindsay. Last week, we're at a 6 out of 10. The on and off again couple is once again off, while Ryan decides to be friends, but then on again when Kirsten tells Ryan it's okay and she, that he should dance with Lindsay. So it's all resolved, and I don't want to give them any more time. <laughs> We've, We've talked, talked about, about them, them. enough. Yeah. It's awful. We're just going to take one point away. We'll keep them at a five out of ten and be blah. Mm-hmm. Continue. Yep. All right. Next up, we have Alex and Seth. Last week, we gave them a seven out of ten. Um, a new tip of the Alex and Seth triangles enter this, enters this week. Sandy. At first, he made Alex second guess her and Seth's newfound love. But in the end, she realized she wants to be part of the family. And then Elise docks them two points here yeah. very interesting at least yeah. what is your what is your reasoning for docking them two points here um alex wants to be part of the family but i still don't think she's sure if she's going to fit in you know she's had a lot of hurt with her family and background and so she wanted to be there for sandy doing the right thing but that's always going to be in the back of her head scott so does that mean that she's going to continue to push Seth away because she thinks that Sandy thinks that's what she wants her to do. I guess. I mean, it seemed like that was all patched up at the end Except of the episode. Except Kirsten wasn't as like warm and welcoming. I told you, Kirsten takes more time. Sandy comes up and gives you the hug. Kirsten gives you the... the, the yes, it is the least you could do. Yes. That that was God. Kirsten sucks in this episode. Yeah. Oh well, it's the least you could do. Yes, it was fucking Kirsten. I think she'll come around. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. I oh. All right. All right. I understand where you're coming from. Kirsten's cold shoulder a little bit, but like the end of the episode is warmth. It's not like it, we don't end on like oh oh. We end on like all of our main characters like singing together, arms around each other, watching uh, Papa Cohen. Sing his beautiful song. Okay. Right. Well, right. that's our relationship roundup this week. And that is the episode this week as well. Next week episode is called The X Factor, mm-hmm. spelled E-X. And um, not to spoil myself or anything, but we are watching these on HBO Max. Yeah, we are. And the title image, the image that goes along with the episode for episode nine, The X Factor, is a big old picture of summer. So mm. I'm wondering if that's the X we're referring to here. Uh, we will just or... have to watch to find out, Scott, I, won't we? I also think the show likes to use these titles in multiple ways. Like this one is The Power of Love. And like it's about it's about love between all characters, about love and respect between all of our characters. Indeed, um, Scott. Indeed. So I think there might be more than one X happening in this moment. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. But that's all the time we have for this week. If you like this podcast, you can check it and all the other shows we do over at our website, doofmedia.com. Also, you can consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash doofmedia. If you happen to be listening via Apple Podcasts and you don't want to donate any money, you can just go over and give us a rating or review, and we would appreciate that. It's another way that you can help us out without spending any money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if they want to spend money... Yeah. Do they get any cool stuff for doing it? I mean, yeah. Like what? They get access to the Discord. True. What's they, that? I don't know. Something you can chat on. <laughs> you can. What do they uh, get for $20? I don't have these levels Ugh, memorized, I, Scott. For $20, they get to pick a movie or a short story for Matt and I to do a show 
on an What if they want me on one of them? They can request that. If you want, it, it's anyone in the Doof Network. If you spe- it, The default is Matt and I, but if you specifically request, I want Elise, I want Elise. Um, that's what I say every day. I want Elise. No. Um, you don't say that at all. I do. Any day. I do. I do. Um, you can you can make Elise appear on the show as well if that's Magically. what you want. If that's what you want. Um, and that's twenty dollars. I so wonder what I would like to watch. Media. Do I don't know. We'll over. figure out that later. We gotta stop the show, baby. The show's over. We gotta say goodbye. Say goodbye. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. I will watch any reality TV show that you want. No, That's a great idea, guys. I'm, I'm watching this. Love I'm Island. This. I'm going to cut this. They're not going to hear the it. Australia gonna, version. It. It's really fun.